Uh, this video is uh, of a SCCA race in Cumberland, Maryland, back in 1957. It was came to Ken Kaiser through Jack Knapp's estate, and Jack is the individual that's filming the pretty much the whole race and the stuff that comes before. Turn. There's Bill driving in. 253 BP. It's the number of the car. You'll see the Ohio license plate that he and Jack Nabb drove the car from Middletown, Ohio to Maryland. As he pulls out, take a quick look at the lower dash in the center, and you'll notice where it's just painted red and there's no tachometer. That's the indication of the airbox car, and the second indication is on the steering column right here. You can see the tachometer mounted on the steering column. Now Jack Nabb is filming the, uh, the, the sta bystanders and the other cars that are in the race. There's race cars out on the track. Here they're driving by the compound, the Ebb Rose compound, where the SR2 Mitchell car is and the two black and pink number 64 and 65 Corvettes. There's Carol Shelby in his coveralls. That's Carol's car in the back, number 65. Ebb Rose is going to drive 64. Now, these are two of the ringers for sure. Here's Bill Howe, and he's in the airbox car. That's him in the coveralls. Jack Nabb is taking the clip. Here's the car, airbox car, ready to go, staging. Now, there's a Ferrari entered in, in one of the classes. There's a fancy European sports car owned by one of the wealthy owners. Starts out, it's a pretty clear day. The race that the Corvettes will be in is the seventh race of the day, so the weather deteriorates as the races are run. We're only going to see film from the actual seventh race where all the Corvettes and some of the uh, competitor cars were entered. As you can see, it's starting to become more overcast with rain threatening. It's a pretty good crowd. A lot of the crowd is perched up on a hill. Makeshift bleachers. Okay, here's the race. There, there's one of the Mercedes cars in the race. Here comes uh, Bill Howe, and Jack Nabb's getting him on the, on the first lap. As we get into it, here's the S curve. There's Carroll Shelby in the 64. The car handles very flat. Now here is his partner in number 65. That's the Sebring practice car, you can see the way it wasn't flat coming through the corner. You can see the difference in the, in the sophistication of the ringers. Now there's Carol Shelby just accelerating away. There's He's being chased by Dick Thompson here in the blue and white car. You can see how Thompson puts that car through the S. That car doesn't waver at all. There's Bill Howe. He's coming through right on the, on the heels. This is his first race in a brand new car right from the factory with no special treatment. And he's right on the heels. Of Dick Thompson. Pretty good effort. Here's Carol Shelby. All day long, he never does catch Dick Thompson. There's the Cascade Green car of Don Yankel. Carol Shelby again. He really pours the coals to it right here on the back stretch. Watch the flatness of Dick Thompson as he takes this car through the S. Thompson again. He'll be coming around. Oh, there's the white Corvette. No, that's not white. Not a white Corvette. Sorry. That's one of the Porsches. Quite a, quite a few cars in this race. There's another Porsche. Now it's starting to rain. They haven't called, they haven't uh, suspended the race yet. But it's starting to, it's getting near the end of the race and the rain has opened up. And it won't be long before they stop the race and take a full fledged rain break. 
This is the restart after the rain break. There's Dick Thompson taking off. You can see how the cars are bunched together. All the Corvettes up front. The race restart wasn't kind to the white Rosenthal car driven by Bart Henry. At this point in the race, Thompson's in first place, Shelby's in second, Bart Henry's in third, and Bill Howe in the airbox car is in fourth. And that's probably the way it's going to finish, except for one thing. That white car right there, the fuel injection cable is about ready to let go. It lets go, the white car drops out of the race, and Bill Howe moves up to third place. There's Howe. Here's Dick Thompson again, coming around for one of the last, one of the last laps, followed by Shelby. The rain sure does make the track a little slicker, especially through the S-curve. You can see the rear end of the car slide out a little more than normal. I think we're coming down to about the last lap right here. Thompson once again. Laps are winding down. Now Shelby has put the hard top back out for the restart after the rain. It was a Devon, wasn't it? Yeah, there was a Devon. There was a Devon driving there in the race. There are no T birds in this race. Uh, no T birds in this race. No, this is a, this is a beat production. At the end of the Cumberland race, okay, that's the end of that film. Dick Thompson in the X, X Sebring car, the Ringer, the be, probably the best Corvette driver in the country, finished in the first place. He led the race. No surprise there, especially driving the Sebring winner, number four car. Carol Shelby on Thompson's heels all day long in number 64, finished in second place. He just couldn't get the job done. He couldn't get past Dick Thompson. In third place was Lawrence Bill Howe Jr. driving the Fox car in his first race ever. Now, what's significant about that? Well, he beats all the other seasoned Corvette drivers and their powerful machines. And here was an absolute rookie in a factory fresh, full fledged race car built at St. Louis. And even being an amateur driver, you can see in the film, he did an outstanding job and he finished third. Hollywood could not write more romantic script for a car race than to have an absolute rookie in a factory car finish behind the two Sebring cars driven by none other than Dr. Richard Thompson and Carol Shelton. You just can't come up with a better scenario for a movie than that. And this is real life and you just witnessed it. Now, how did everybody else fare? Well, finishing eighth overall was Dean McCarthy in 277. Finishing tenth overall was Eb Rose Jr., another almost rookie driver, but he's driving a Sebring practice car, and he finishes a distant tenth, tenth position overall compared to Howe finishing in third place with the factory airbox car. And finally, in 11th place was Herbert Weiss in number 218 Corvette. And finishing 14th overall was Homer Daisy. Terrific drivers, Bart Henry, Don Yanko, and Frank Dominiani were all DNFs. They didn't finish the race. Now those are some pretty accomplished drivers. So hats off. And just as a little aside here. There are several things going on in the background of this race kind of interesting. The first one to me was the fact that three of these cars were in fact factory race cars and were ringers. They were not a production car that some amateur got and fixed up and raced. They were factory prepared ringers. Second thing is the drivers. Dr. Dick Thompson was well known for driving. 
uh, and this was the first race that Carol Shelby did for Corvette. Now, unbeknownst to the people in the foreground, Carol Shelby had been hired under the table by Ed Cole to race Corvettes for $50,000. Now, it became obvious to Shelby during this race and the next race that he was never going to be able to beat Dick Thompson. So he reneged on the deal and basically told Cole, oh, I'm not going to drive Corvettes anymore. Now, this probably is a source of irritation between Ed Cole and Shelby that probably ended up costing Shelby some uh, engines when he wanted to run the, the Cobras. Uh, the other thing is the difference between a airbox car and a uh, fuel injected car with the brake option, heavy duty brake options. Uh, it was found later on that the airbox cars in a road race situation tended to lose their left rear brakes because the plenum would suck away air that needed to go back to the air to the brakes. And in fact, if you go back and review the top tier Corvette race cars of that era, none of them ran airbox cars. They all ran fuel injection with the brake options to cool the rear brakes. But Chevrolet knew that there was a problem with this, and they uh, made sure that the top production, top tier cars, in fact, ran just the brake only uh, situation.